Ladies and gentlemen, today is December, December 31st, um, meaning that we are 10 days away from the Golden Globes. Not only that, we are officially two weeks away from the Academy Award nominations being released. Can't tell. I have a bit of a cold, so bear with me. But these are my 2016 Oscar predictions for supporting actress and actor, lead actress and actor, director, and best picture. Um, this won't be the last thing of Oscar coverage I do. In two weeks when the nominations are released, I'll do some reactions to those, kind of say who got snubbed, uh, what was a surprise, and all that good stuff. And then probably some stuff pretty close to the, the show in February. Uh, probably my predictions on winners, who should win, who will win, who could sneak in. So, let's jump right into it with Supporting Actress. Now this is an interesting category this year, due to the fact of two people. Alicia Vikander and Rooney Mara, uh, for their roles in The Danish Girl and Carol. Um, the reason that it makes things odd is because... They could both go lead, and if they go lead, neither of them have a chance of winning the Oscar. However, I saw Carol yesterday. I'm not going to see the Danish girl, because I don't want to. Um, I would say that Rooney Mara is supporting, so I'm going to put both of them in supporting. Which means that, in my opinion, I have uh, Rooney Mara winning the Academy Award this year. She's previously nominated for The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. She's great in this movie, even though this movie is, like, completely Oscar bait. Um, Alicia Vikander is the one that I could see taking the pedestal. She's the one that I could see sneaking her way in. Uh, people have been saying she'll be nominated for Ex Machina. I don't know about that. Um, the other three, who, who I think, uh, again, this is who, what I think the Academy is gonna do. Not what I want, not my preference. Um, I'm saying Rachel McAdams for Spotlight, who, yes, was good, but not great. Uh, I recently saw this, it was a couple days ago, and um, this person just stole the show in the film, Jennifer Jason Leigh in The Hateful Eight. Uh, if they don't give her the nomination, I, I, I will just be utterly shocked. Uh, she stole every scene she was in, which is pretty much every scene. Uh, she runs the show, even being the supporting actress. Her first line made everyone in the theater laugh. Um, what she does is just great in this role. And finally, Kate Winslet for Steve Jobs. I think she is the only kind of lock in this category. She is the only one that I could, that would definitely be nominated, because, you know, Rooney Mara and Vikander could go lead. Um, will she win? No. She was really good, so she'll be nominated. Um, moving on to, uh, Supporting actor, I this one was interesting because for a while, uh, Michael Keaton, on every single website you could check, he was not predicted to win. He was predicted to win, excuse me. And Spotlight came out wide release, and now he's really not even being predicted to be nominated. And that's kind of carrying over to mine as well. My choices for nominees come down to Christian Bale for The Big Short, who was great in it recently, uh, does that transformation again that he does so well. Um... Uh, b -b 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 Idris Elba for Beast of No Nation, who did a great job at performing as what he had to do uh, in a very dark film, a very dark role, something that's very difficult to complete. Um, Mark Ruffalo for Spotlight. I am sticking with Mark Ruffalo. Uh, I don't think he should be nominated, personally. But, I think he will be. I think the Academy is going to give him that nomination. Uh, Sylvester Stallone for Creed. Sylvester Stallone gave the best performance of his career in Creed. He, he, right now, he's the Expendables guy. Now he's the Creed guy, and that's how he should be known, and I think the Academy will definitely give him that nomination. But who do I think is going to win? I think this guy kind of held the number two slot while Michael Keaton was always at the number one slot, but now that Keaton's kind of been bumped off the pedestal, it's Mark Rylance for Bridge of Spies. Um, I agree that out of these people... He should win. I have seen all of those performances. And uh, Mark Rylance is the best out of them. Mark Rylance wasn't really anyone that most people knew. He did a lot of Broadway stuff, a lot of TV, but he was never a, a name or face that people knew on the big screen. And when he popped up in Bridge of Spies and totally transformed into this guy, it's phenomenal. The, the things he did with it. it. It's no, you know, J.K. Simmons just screaming at people. It's a very subtle performance that 
is very convincing that makes you think he is this person. Um, lead actress. This one is also really interesting because ever since the early days of Oscar nominations, I usually like to use August as that. Uh, Kate Blanchett for Carol was the number one slot. No one was going to come close. And then the film festival started happening where a little film called Room was playing. Um, and it just shot up. And in one category especially, and that was lead actress, Brie Larson is my predicted winner, and I don't really think that's going to change. Uh, Brie Larson popped out of nowhere. It is the true underdog story. Again, another one who's really not in much. She was in an uh, indie film last year, Short Term 12, which she's great in. No one really knew who she was. She totally popped up in this movie. No one expected this to be great. People had read the book. Um, everyone loved her performance in it. She was great. She's shown in this movie. Uh, she's going to win. Um, that being said, I also think Kate Planchette will be nominated, um, as well as, oh my god, what is it, like, Shashi? Something Ronin? That's how, what's his name at the Golden Globes pronounced? It's Say, uh, Say Rice Ronin. Yeah. Say Rice Ronin. Yeah. Um, Her. She'll be nominated. Uh, I didn't see Brooklyn. I don't plan on seeing Brooklyn. Those are those three films. I didn't want to see Carol, but I ended up seeing it. Danish Girl and Brooklyn I'm not seeing because they're both just Oscar bait. Um, Charlotte Rampling for 45 Years. I have not seen 45 Years. I've seen clips of it, and she is really good. Um, as well as Jennifer Lawrence for Joy. Um, uh, I'm seeing Joy very soon. The Academy loves Jennifer Lawrence. For some reason. Joy is apparently not all that good. She apparently really shines through the film. So they're going to give her the nomination. Uh, lead actor. I've been really invested into this category for a long time. Because my predictions since August have kind of stayed relatively the same. Here's the deal. There are three locks. Leonardo DiCaprio for The Revenant. Michael Fassbender for Steve Jobs. And Eddie Redmayne for The Danish Girl. All three of them are going to be nominated. And then there were two kind of shaky ones that I had nominated. Tom Hanks for British Spies and Johnny Depp for Black Mass. I kicked out Tom Hanks for British Spies when I saw the, the film. He's great in it. He's not going to be nominated for an Oscar. Um, I am sticking to my guns on Johnny Depp just because of the fact that it's been 10 years since he was A in a good movie and Black Mass is very meh. And... Or since he's had a good performance. And he was good in the film. Um, so I'm sticking to my guns that he's going to be nominated for that. Um, just because of the fact that people were naming it as a snub when he wasn't nominated for the Golden Globe. Uh, I think he'll be nominated. Um, so it came down to who's going to replace Tom Hanks. And I came down to a couple of people. Three people. And that would be... Brian Cranston for Trumbo, which I saw. Brian Cranston, one of my favorite actors. I love Breaking Bad. He was great in Argo. Um, and all the other stuff he's in. Malcolm in the Middle. He's the best part of Godzilla. Um, he was phenomenal in Trumbo. I don't think he's the one to be nominated. Um, and then was Will Smith for Concussion. I recently saw Concussion. Yes, he had a very convincing South African accent. Is he one of the five best performances of the year? No. I don't think he'll be nominated. So, it came down to the one, that and this was kind of the one that I had in mind that could be nominated, and that's Matt Damon for The Martian. Uh, he was great. He did have a physical change. He did so much stuff that would allow him to get this nomination. He was, throughout the film, mainly on screen by himself, so it was very hard to pull off a great performance uh, when there's really no one else there with you to back you up. Um... Look, if Eddie Redmayne wins, I'll be kind of pissed off. I consider it a snub last year that he won. Yes, he was really good. Michael Keaton, who hadn't had a good performance since, like, what, Beetlejuice? Or something like that? To pop up in a movie like Birdman, which I hated, but he was so good in that, and for them not to give him the Oscar really bothered me. Michael Fassbender, I think probably should win. He's not going to win. Now, Leonardo DiCaprio... I have not seen The Revenant yet. I'm seeing it next week because it hasn't come out yet. I didn't get to see the limited release because I don't think it was playing anywhere here. 
um, Leonardo DiCaprio is going to win the Oscar, and there are a couple reasons. First of all, the physical thing. Second of all, apparently he only has a couple lines of dialogue, and most of them are in a different language. Uh, C, because he went through all of the stuff he went through on, on shooting. And D, because he's in the club, the Oscar club. And if you're not wondering what that, if you're wondering what that is, um, it's the same club that Julianne Moore is in, because she won the Oscar for um, Still Alice when Felicity Jones and Rosamund Pike were both better than her that year. Um, uh, it's the same reason Julia Roberts won for Aaron Brockovich against Ellen Burstyn, uh, when Ellen Burstyn for Requiem for a Dream was just so much more layered and so much better. And it's the same reason that Meryl Streep is continuously nominated, and if she is nominated for Ricky in the Flash this year, like some people are saying she will be, I will be so upset. She, that movie was terrible. Uh, she's been nominated, what, 18 times? Last year she was nominated for Into the Woods. Why? I saw Into the A, Into the Woods was bad. B, she's not really that good in Into the Woods. Anyway... Um, and he's gonna win because he's in the club, and I don't want to. I don't want to judge him on that yet because I haven't seen the film. But like, people have been constantly complaining that he hasn't won an Oscar, and every time he's been nominated, someone was better than him. They screwed him over twice. The first time was 2006 in The Departed, when he was not nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and he was nominated for Lead Actor for Blood Diamond. And the second time, he wouldn't have won, but I he would have had a spiritual win in my heart. Was Django Unchained, where he easily had the best performance of his career as that slave owner. Uh, unfortunately, Christoph Waltz came in, took it, definitely deserved the Oscar. Um, but this this time around, it's his. Uh, best Director. So this one is kind of a three-way race, uh, with two people sitting in the background. Todd Haynes for Carol, and um, Alejandro Nieri too for The Revenant. Um, the Revenant is mainly cinematography. That's how the film is mainly based. And yes, he did a lot. To, he has a lot to do with that, but I don't see him winning. The three that I think are Ridley Scott for The Martian, who managed to just take this book in this desolate area and transform it into the big screen and do it well. Uh, George Miller for Mad Max Fury Road. Fury Road. Fury Road. Um, I, just some of those shots, you stand up, you're like, how did they film that? What did they do? And then it's Tom McCarthy for Spotlight, who has a much different substance than... The other two, he kind of has this subtle directing style. And, because it's the Oscars, they're going to give it to Tom McCarthy for that subtle directing style. And so, finally, Best Picture. I have ten nominees, because they're allowed to nominate ten. Will they nominate ten? Probably not. Why? I don't know. Um, but I have prepared ten. So, Brooklyn, because it's Oscar bait. That's all that movie is. When, whenever you see, like, a 1950s romance movie it that's it's made to win oscars uh the big short which i recently saw uh, i i actually really like that movie it, it manages to take a really interesting storyline the whole housing market thing make it understandable for the common person uh, make it funny make it dramatic both times when it needs to be uh bridge of spies which i loved it kind of showed that steven spielberg still had it his last couple years have been semi-rough uh war horse was good indiana jones was awful uh, Lincoln I really liked, I know a lot of people don't like it though, uh, and this was his first movie since 2012, so he kind of came back strong. Uh, Room, again, no one saw this one coming, and now it came out, it was great, everyone loves it, and it's gonna be Best Picture nominated. Uh, Mad Max, Fury Road, I don't know if it'll be nominated, I feel like if they, they're gonna nominate Nine, and that'll be the one that's left off. I love that movie, it's one of the best of the year, and I really hope that they, they show that. Uh, Carol, Again, another 1950s Oscar bait film. Uh, the Revenant. The Revenant is the big, you know, second place right now, I think. Um, with that whole cinematography, the performances, the script, everything about that movie. It's just going to be this big gore fest, and I'm actually really excited to see it. Um, the Martian. This was one that, like, for a little while after it came out, people were kind of saying, well, it could be or could not be nominated for Oscars, and then it kind of hit people saying, yeah, it's going to be nominated for an Oscar. It's going to be this year's Gravity at the Oscars. Um, just, it's not this year's Gravity, because Gravity was terrible. Yeah, if you see Gravity in theaters, I walked out of Gravity in theaters, like, man, that movie was awesome. I watched it again at home. Wow, that movie was garbage. That is one of the worst screenplays of, whatever. Uh, Spotlight. Again, the whole big, big thing. And 
it came down between Star Wars and Inside Out, and it kind of hit me like, well, Inside Out might not even win Best Animated Feature on a Melissa. So I picked Star Wars, and I hope they honor Star Wars at the Best Picture um, nominees. But my choice for Best Picture is Spotlight, which has kind of been the big one for a little while, the, the one that people have been predicting, uh, mainly because it, it, it fits... <laughs> All the Academy's little guidelines. I'm not going to get into that now. I'll probably get into that in another video. Um, so, this is, uh, those are my Oscar predictions uh, for the month of January. In two weeks, like I said, I will do another Oscar video. I will give my reactions and snubs and stuff. And then in February, the Thursday before the Oscars, I will give my will win, should win, could win. Um... Which is bound to change from now to then because we'll have had the Golden Globes and the SAGs and the BAFTAs and the Critics' Choice Awards. So keep keep an eye open for that. Uh, keep checking Oscar stuff. Some stuff is bound to change. There will be some kind of snub in the nominations, some surprise. We'll see. Uh, there's always a big one. It's never what it's supposed to be, you know. Uh, Jake John Hall for Nightcrawler, all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.